The Eisenhower Tunnel, the iconic main vocal point of the most treacherous stretch of interstate highway in the United States, I-70 in Colorado. Completed in the 1970s, it's considered one of the greatest engineering feats of that century and showed that anything is possible for the interstate system in America. So today I'll be talking about that tunnel and the process involved with making something of that size and importance. Before that though, I wanted to please ask if you would consider subscribing to the channel. The support on the channel recently has been absolutely amazing and I appreciate it so much. We're still trying to get to 100k by the end of the year, so if you enjoy this type of geography content, then go down below this video and click the subscribe button really quick. Thank you. So first of all, let's get something straight. This is a video about the Eisenhower Tunnel as well as the Edwin C. Johnson Memorial Tunnel. Because of the way the interstate system works, there are two tunnels to get the divided highway through the mountain. If you're going westbound, you'll be in the Eisenhower Tunnel, and eastbound will be in the Edwin Johnson Memorial Tunnel. For this video, I'll be referring to both of these tunnels as the Eisenhower Tunnel because that's the common name used for both. So now let's cut back to 1950, when the idea for the tunnel first originated. Up to this point, traffic going westbound from Denver had to drive on the wagon road, now known as Loveland Pass. It was a very inconvenient way to get through the mountains, because even though Denver at that time only had the population of present-day Springfield, Missouri, it was still a relatively important route through the Rockies. But when the idea for a transcontinental highway across Colorado was introduced, serious discussion began for how to get through the difficult stretch of mountainous land 60 miles west of Denver. There wouldn't be an easy way, because there weren't any real breaks in the mountains as is. And getting the highway through that, while also keeping it up to interstate standards, sounded darn near impossible. So when it was decided the best option was to follow the U.S. Route 6 corridor, engineers recommended tunneling under the pass rather than attempting to build an interstate highway through the mountains of that size. So in 1968, construction was started on the tunnel that would change interstate travel forever. Now obviously everyone knew the process would not be easy. After all, multiple 1.6 mile tunnels straight through a mountain in 1970 was an idea basically unheard of at the time. But the amount of setbacks for the project were still not ideal. One of the biggest setbacks came when fault lines were discovered in the path of the tunnel, which were not previously known. This meant it was a lot harder to excavate, and the first construction contractor went bankrupt attempting to do it. Just to make things worse, the faults began to slip during construction, and emergency measures had to be taken to protect the tunnels and the workers from cave-ins and collapses. Despite the best effort of engineers, three workers were killed excavating the first tube, and four in excavating the second. Another setback came when the machine used to bore the tunnel slowed down in the speed because of the high elevations they were working at, making the process even slower than before. One engineer said during the process of the building, We were going by the book, but the mountain couldn't read. That quote pretty much sums up the building of the first tunnel, which was supposed to take three years to build, but instead took almost five years to be open to the public as a two-lane highway. But apparently people really liked the idea of easy traffic through this route, because the amount of traffic through the north tunnel far exceeded the expectation and construction on the southern tunnel was started in a hurry to match the traffic using the road. So then the Edwin Johnson Memorial Tunnel was built. Not experiencing the same amount of setbacks because everyone now knew the effort it was going to take to build and weren't doing it for the first time. But it didn't come without setbacks. On October 2nd, 1970, a plane crashed two miles northeast of the construction site. On this plane was 40 passengers from the college football team of Wichita State University. It was on its way to an away game in Logan, Utah and wanted to take a scenic route through the mountains. Out of the 40 passengers on board, only 9 survived the crash. There's also problems involving the feminist movement during the construction of the tunnels. When Janet Bonema applied for a position and was accepted because her supervisor misread her name on her resume and thought he was hiring James instead, he soon discovered it was a woman he had hired. Janet was then put in the offices to do support work, because at that time there was much opposition to a woman entering the construction site. A lot of the workers came from a mining background and had a common superstition that women brought bad luck to mines. Bonema then sued the department for the right to work inside the tunnel, and because of the equal rights law in Colorado, she was finally allowed to enter the tunnel in 1972. Multiple people quit their job because of this, and others made sexist remarks towards her. So on her second day working there, she came wearing coveralls and even assigned tasks to workers there. She continued to work there until the completion of the second tunnel in 1979, where it was then open to traffic. With this completion, it became the highest road tunnel in the world, a record it still holds. It also became the highest point on all of the U.S. interstate system, 
getting up to 11,158 feet above sea level at its highest point. It holds an average of 30,000 vehicles per day, making it one of the most popular mountain tunnels in the world. There are still things going on, and the Eisenhower Tunnel is always improving. In 2007, the original signage was replaced with more low-profile signage to allow for the removal of a height limit that was currently in place, making it a lot easier for taller trucks to go through the tunnel. In 2020, cyclists were officially banned from the tunnel, which means until then, bikers could legally go through the Eisenhower Tunnel. This came when a large group of bikers wanted to go through the tunnel, and the state was largely opposed to it, so they easily passed a bill that would ban cyclists from going through the tunnel. For vehicles that can't go through the tunnels, like trucks hauling hazardous materials, US Highway 6 is still open. Going over Loveland Pass, it's a beautiful two-lane route going through some of the biggest mountains in America. So even though it's not very efficient for truckers, it's still a pretty drive. And if you're afraid of tunnels, you might want to take this route as well. But back to the Eisenhower Tunnel. It's still one of the most impressive engineering features feats in U.S. history and will always be remembered as one of the most iconic points in the interstate system. Thanks for watching.